We're at Buffalo Comic Con! What up? <laughs> Why am I always the one that's over here, over enthusiastic? No, 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 no. Welcome to the show! We're here! <laughs> so I we think. we are. We are indeed. <laughs> We've gotten to meet so many cool people and we're gonna introduce you to them as well. Yes. That's next on the Nerdy Namacon Convention Show. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Roberts. How are you? So we're over here at Buffalo Comic Con. We're just talking with everybody about some of their favorite fandoms. I've got to be honest with you, sir. You are one of my touchstones to my childhood. I mean, I loved you in the Dark Knight movies, and I talked to you yesterday just very briefly about a show called Fear Itself. Very not well remembered. Lots of people don't remember it, but you were in my favorite episode called Spooked. I just want to talk to you a little bit about, like, maybe what are some of your uh, favorite genres, some of your favorite fandoms, some of your favorite projects. Well, I love what I call booger movies, and my first really horror experience was I was a little boy, and it was called uh, The Tingle. Okay. It was, it was a Peter Laurie, and uh, it was like a centipede that would go into movie theaters and like kill people. Right. And I was like four or five. Oh my God, it scared me for days, days and days. Then I, I, like, I told my dad I want to see more, more like spooky movies, so he takes me to Wolfman, Lon Chaney Jr. And uh, so we bought a little thin model and we painted it, put it together. But but I couldn't sleep with it in the room. So I went in and out of enjoying being scared. But as an adult, I love doing the uh, horror scary genre. It's so much fun. And everybody also expects that because I play a lot of bad guys. So I have a lot of fun. And for the record, you play a bad guy so well. It's it's that smile. You just you convey menace and whimsy Are you really in, through bad that guy? smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I'm we all we all look at ourselves as good guys. Even all the bad guys I play, they don't know they're bad guys. <laughs> That's right. I absolutely love it. Um, one last question, then I'll let you go. We'll just keep this real quick. Who are some of uh, your favorite actors that you've had a chance to work with? Like now, somebody well, that really comes to mind. I have to be very very careful here because uh, we name two people, you leave out two people. So I have to be very careful. You know that's a good answer. But yeah. I love. Susan Random. I love my sister. Mm -hmm. I love I love uh, I love Sterling Hayden. I love Brooke Shields. I love my wife Eliza Roberts. Great actor to work with. Uh, I loved uh, uh, what's John Travolta's wife's name? Kelly. John Travolta's wife. Pressler. Kelly Preston. Yes. Preston. Thank you. I love Thank Kelly you. Preston. <laughs> Let me see who else do I, do I have, have a good time with? Yeah. Um, Michael Madsen, Sam Shepard, oh, what actors Madsen. I work with, I've been, I've been really had a good time with. Michael Madsen has that sinister John smile Boyd. as well, you know? Michael Madsen is a sweet guy. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Mr. Roberts, thank you so much for coming Call on. Call me Eric, dude. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for coming on. I guess we should say, we're too tall, Chris. I know, I'm so We should take out the shoes. <laughs> so, we are the Nerdy Mama, my name is Holly, and I'm here with Mia and Kennerly the Hershman. Hi! Uh, I don't know if you guys know who they are, but they play um, renditions of rock music on their harps. We decided to start branching out and play music that we really love to listen to. We so do a lot of classic rock. We started rock. teaching ourselves to arrange rock. And we do a lot of uh, yeah. soundtrack, new TV, yeah. movie, video game, we do some anime, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. so a big, pretty big variety, just yes. whatever we enjoy listening to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I watch your videos on YouTube. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how do you decide what songs you're going to do? Uh, it's music that we really love. We do now uh, try to take some fan requests, but so we'll keep uh, a list. And if we hear a lot of requests for a particular song, then we'll do it. Like we're big fans of Iron Maiden, and so we covered a couple Iron Maiden songs. Sure. We kept getting requests for the Trooper, so we did, did the Trooper. But it, even with requests, it has to be music that we really love. Right. Because if we don't love it, then you know it's not. There's no come point in doing it. High turtle syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. turtle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got kissed. <laughs> What are some songs that you would not do? Oh, oh yes. 
Well, I can tell you there's like one song that we posted that we wish we had done. Okay. Um, we did a Hold It Against Me with Britney Spears. Okay. <laughs> we really regret that years back, but it was kind of a... Uh, it was because we were like, oh, you should do some pop. So we did some pop, but it really wasn't our style. So we so. don't cover a lot of pop music. Yeah. Well, your genre is mainly rock. A lot of rock, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Rock, metal, and I would say soundtrack, soundtrack. are kind of our, yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of our main things. I love soundtracks myself. Yeah. Yes. And such good music all the way around. Film, yeah. TV, yeah. and even video games. People don't realize that video games have such amazing... I think it kind of takes back to like only like yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, we have an arrangement of uh, a medley from Elfrat Rolls to the Skyrim Memorial. And so we'll play it somewhere where people aren't familiar with it. And they're like, wow, this is video game music? Uh, no idea. You know? How do you guys uh, come up with your arrangements? Do you just listen to it and know what it sounds like? Or do you look at sheet music from other people? Yeah, we, we don't go <laughs> no, at the same time. We, we don't go off um, like other arrangements or sheet music. We, that's when we first decide to arrange a song. We try not to listen to anyone else's interpretations of it because I feel like that would influence us. In we, want some way to, we want only to be influenced by the original. So we'll listen to the original again and again, and usually we already know it really well. And then we'll just kind of gradually figure out each piece. Okay, this is the melody, yeah. and these are the guitars, and how do we put the rhythm? rhythm and, and we're playing, you know, only on two parts, so we have to figure out how to incorporate all those different things yeah. into just the two yeah. hard parts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember you guys had that one video where you were kicking the heart. That was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was our own invented. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was from Metallica's one. And we actually done a few pieces now with just one harp. But with yeah. that particular arrangement, we wanted to, we were, wanted to play one harp on it. And we wanted to do some uh, percussion on the soundboard because in one by Metallica, oh, no, the percussion is such an important strange. part of the song. And uh, so but it was easy for the person on the front of the harp to do kind of some hand stuff. But we wanted the person who was, I was in the back of it and I couldn't reach it with my so hand. So we were just so. kind of experimenting and we're like, oh wait, we can, well, we I could just stand on one so leg. Really and yeah. <laughs> Tolkien fans, so and we're also huge Walking Dead fans. Yeah, so those are a couple of our fan movies. <laughs> so we actually oh, okay. we had a chance to have a cameo in the Walking Dead, the season six finale. We got to be oh, as a cool. public walker, so we got to be killed by Carol. And awesome, that was fan girls. I don't watch it. <laughs> Zombies freak me out. Oh no! <laughs> um, but that's awesome. Well, thank that's you. That's cool that you guys have that. How did that uh, happen? Well, we, we performed for a lot of the, uh, we, we did a, a cover of the theme from okay. The Walking Dead yeah. and had it on YouTube. Because of that, we were also performed at Orca Soccer Cons, which is uh, The Walking Dead Con, it has a lot of cast members in um, it. And so we met the uh, executive producer and director, and he, Greg Nicotero, he created all the Walker look and everything, he's an FX makeup person, and uh, he um, said, oh, you know, it'd be really cool to use you guys somehow, uh, the fact that you're twins, and so we came up with this idea to use this as the same Walker. So I had a prosthetic that allowed my face to be peeled back, and I didn't have that. That way they could switch us in and out and redo the scene again and again. So it kind of really had the clean face, and so the actor could get a bunch of takes without having them have the, the face all messed up. So it kind of got messed up once it was pulled off. A lot of gore yeah. when faces get pulled off, that's <laughs> Right. So we're, you know, he said, would you like to do this role? And we're like, uh, yes, we will. That's awesome. Yeah. You, so you guys are from Chicago. Did yeah. you have to go somewhere? Did you go yeah, yeah, we live in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Or the area, Atlanta area. But we were already down there performing for some events anyway. Yeah, it worked so out really well. Out awesome. And uh, just what about your guys' relationship as sisters? Oh, uh, we're, we're best friends. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's hard to describe because we've never not been twins. We've never so not we been don't best know friends. Like not we don't know be. what it would mean to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. We were born with our best it's friends. It's really so. nice though because we, we get to work so closely with somebody that we yeah. get along with so, so well. well. Hi, Jarrah. Yeah. Hello. Up, Hi, guys. Hi, guys. It was awesome yesterday. Thank you so much. Your performances. <laughs> Nothing better than having the turtles at our show. I know. So yeah, it was great. That. It was great. I'm going to give you a whole Thank you. It's great. Bye, guys. Bye, You heard the people were asking where Leo was the whole time. Can get a hug? All right. Okay. All right. Me too. They're even hugging you to sing. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> they are fun. Yeah. They are super fun. Those two look broke. Yeah. I was waiting for like a tubular or a radical to come up. Yeah. Like, uh, cowbunga. Cowbunga. I was just curious like how professionally it works. Like do you guys ever agree on anything? Or are you guys always really like my yeah, I think that's the cool thing about working with your identical twin because yeah. we think in such a similar way that we can, we can bounce ideas off each other and you know it's it, we haven't 
never disagreed on like what song to cover or what to do with our career. It's always like a collaboration. Yeah. It's just like you know feed off of each other. Yeah, so like, exactly. And it's really it's super fun because I think when we play together too, we play in such of a more in tune way. Than yeah, we have really good synergy. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, most duos they play together once in a while, or they play together a couple years. Oh, we always or, are playing together. Yeah, we've so. done and we've been together our entire lives since before we were born. Yeah. So we're very in tune. Yeah. <laughs> are there any questions that you've not been asked? Which you really would have loved to been asked. Oh, wow. Someone sat down. That's a really good. Question. Um, Actually, what about how we work together is pretty yeah. Unusual, which is, I guess where to find us would be the only thing. Oh yeah, we'll work. <laughs> well, our website's carptwins.com, and you can look there to our Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and we post blue check marks. Oh, yeah, all of our sites are verified with blue check marks. But we, um, yeah, we upload a video probably about once a month on YouTube. We've got 90 videos now, and yeah, 60, so if you subscribe there, we have that. two million views or something like that yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> it's easy to find us. <laughs> I found them. You should yeah. find them. <laughs> Alright, well, thank you for talking with hey, us. Thank you. I love you guys. You guys Aww. will love them. They are awesome. Um, and, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. That was fun. All right, so we've gotten to meet some amazing actors here. I Thank you so much to Eric Roberts for coming on with us. Thank you. I would consider them actors as well as musicians, the Harp Twins. And, dude, and comedians. They are very funny. <laughs> Hysterical. If you have not seen their live show, go to a convention and see them. Yeah. Go on. You're already on YouTube. <laughs> Look them up for YouTube. Them out. <laughs> it's true. They're amazing. So, let's meet a cosplayer. You're cosplaying. Let's meet a cosplayer. <laughs> R2-D2 is exploding behind us, in front of us. That's not R2-D2. Wow. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're only gonna do judo in the group. Okay, 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 All right? okay. Right? okay. You, can, you, can, you can win this back then. Okay, you can good. Win this back. Okay, good. Alright, so it looks like actors are not the only people that were uh, here at Buffalo Comic Con. There, we've got some harp players, and we also have people that were trained as actors and just happened to take it in that step and become even more awesome. Oh, well, thank you. I so, enjoy being even more awesome. Well, you succeeded. <laughs> we're here with Holly Wolf. Hello! World famous cosplayer, world famous looking just like Zelda. Yes! I, mean, I, I look over, I see Zelda, and I'm like, my hat! I, I, I need to go to there. I, we need to, I talk. need to go to there. <laughs> yeah, every time I see someone actually that like has something um, with a cosplay that I'm wearing at the time, for example, like someone wearing a Zelda hat or whatever, mm -hmm. if they don't say hi when I'm wearing a cosplay that goes with that fandom, I'm always kind of like, <laughs> kind of get a little melancholy about that? Like, why did... We should be friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked a little bit before we got the cameras rolling, and yes. I'm pretty sure we just became best friends. Yes, we did! And we're going to go do karate in the garage. Let's go! <laughs> so, uh, tell us a little bit about your secret origin story. Now, you went to school for acting. <laughs> yes, I went to school for musical theater. Uh, I shared a college in Oakville, which is a pretty good school in Canada. Like literally across She's the Canadian border. too. Yes, I live in Canada. I live in Toronto, but I went to school there, uh, studied musical theater for four years, and did a lot of stunt work on TV shows. Did a little bit of acting on, on shows and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of stuff is filmed in Toronto because yeah. New York, Toronto, looks the same. You just park some yellow taxis in there, you're good to go. So, did you say that you did stunt work? Yes, yeah, I was, uh, there's, there was a show like Covert Affairs, I was the main girl Piper her stunt double for a little bit. I actually trained and did Taekwondo for like eight, nine years. Uh, my dad is, I don't know, my dad just put me in everything. He's like, Taekwondo, yeah, dancing, oh, yeah. I was joking about the karate in the garage, no, now I'm I, legitimately I probably like kick your ass. She can take me, <laughs> she can take me. Yes. What's some of your favorite fandoms? We've been asking everybody what kind of geeky stuff they right. love. And you've got so much cosplay here. Yes. Um, so I grew up playing a lot of video games. Um, I used to run downstairs into our basement. My grandma lived in West. She had a Sega Genesis down there. I used to play a lot of Sonic growing up. I used to play a lot of... Well, not used to. <laughs> Still do. A lot, of, a lot of Zelda, a lot of Final Fantasy. Kingdom Hearts I absolutely love. I was a, a bit RPG type girl, um, lighter things like Harvest Moon and cute things like that, but yeah, I'm primarily, yeah, Final Fantasy and Zelda are my top two, easily, easily. 
favorite Zelda game? Uh, that one's hard too, especially uh, with the multiple timelines. Yes, Majora's Mask. Good choice. I love Majora's Mask. I love things, and I mean, this is probably why Final Fantasy VII is also my favorite Final Fantasy game, followed closely by yep. Ten. Yes. yes. I I like things that are darker. Majora's Mask is pretty dark. It's basically a horror game set in the Zelda universe. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's really creepy. There's so many little side stories in it that you're just kind of like. It really gets you, so I, I fell in love with that. And because it was so much like Ocarina of Time as well, Yes. Um, you're already familiar with all the characters because it's a parallel world. I was just like, this is awesome. And I loved playing that a lot. So Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and I mean, Breath of the Wild is pretty damn amazing. I'm obsessed. It's so. among the best games ever created. Yeah. yeah. I really liked Twilight Princess, too. My last I've name never is played Wolf. That. What? <laughs> Oh, it's good. I never played that it's, one. It's, it's I never got the game cube. <laughs> so this is Holly Wolf, everybody. Where can they find you? Uh, so you can find me at hollywolf.ca. That is my website. Everything else, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Snapchat, are all Holly T. Wolf. So honestly, you just Google my name. Google her finder, man. Don't. Well, you could. I was going to be like, Google Holly Wolf Nude, you'll, you'll, you're in for a surprise there. I also work for Playboy. Wee! Delicious. <laughs> Just Google Holly Wolf, okay? Just do that. All right, so actors, musicians, cosplayers. How about some graphic designers? Ooh, yes, please. All right, so we've had musicians, we've had actors, we've had probably the world's coolest cosplayer. And I'm not just saying that because she's standing right behind this camera right now either. She's oh, pretty hi <laughs> Why don't you run in real quick? We also have some badass shirt designers. Now, you guys all know, even from the podcast, I'm always talking about, I kind of collect shirts, okay? I get a lot of them from websites that kind of have them up for one day, like Ripped Apparel and everything like that. But I just happen to be talking with some awesome guys, and they've got some shirts that they're like Pokemon. I gotta catch them all. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about what we've uh, got going on here. Yeah, man. So we just do a lot of screen prints here. Um, we want to make sure we keep everything nice and tight, so we do a lot of uh, printing right onto the shirt. Some of the other you know things they do is like a, kind of a rough iron on, so we want to make sure that we scrap all that, get a nice clean feel on the shirt. It's screen printed right in. It's made to last. I've had shirts that I've washed over a hundred times that still look perfect from day one. Um, we do a lot of prints, though. We, you know, we do a lot of like uh, kind of no mercy that's going on right now, or it's kind of a play on the Karate Kid crane kick. Um, we do a Hey Ladies that people are really liking. Um, we did a little uh, rendition of the Say Anything where we updated it to a 2007 or 17 tech style, you know, instead of holding up the boom box, he's got like the iPhone and stuff like that. So we do a lot of plays, um, a lot of artistic work. Uh, Dale here is the artist. He draws out everything hand drawn, um, a lot of stuff done on the computer too. So it's all original designs. Um, and we just like to keep it local, man. We're Buffalo based. We're all about Buffalo. Both of us born and raised here. If you check out the um, the graphic that we use as our logo, it's actually the cityscape of Buffalo and uh, 78th Meridian, our clothing name. Um, that's actually the Meridian line that Buffalo falls on when you check on the globe. So we just try to keep it all about Buffalo, keep it all about local, put out a great product, and hopefully people enjoy it. Right on, man. Plug your website. Tell us where to find you. You can find us at uh, www.78thmeridian.com. Um, everything's available on the site, and I just want to let everybody know the best thing about the site. If you order through the site directly, we do fully color customization. So um, a lot of people don't really do that. Say you see a print that you like. You're not really digging the colors. Like we rock the catastics a lot of time in the red and the black. If you're not feeling it, you want it done in a blue and a white, we can do that for you. Gray and green, we over uh, offer 18 color combinations on every single t-shirt that we have. Right on, man. Yeah, man. So uh, guys, the uh, website's in the show notes, but also 70th Meridian. Check these guys out. That was this weekend at Buffalo Comic Con, man. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed the interviews that we were able to get. Some amazing people. Thank you to Eric Roberts. Thank you to uh, the Harp Twins. Thank you to Holly Wolf. Holly Wolf! Dude, thank you to everybody, man. Until next time, I've been Robbie. Always Holly. David Duncan. Let's close the video book. I don't know. That's like our podcast sound, sound up.
<laughs> go team, go! <laughs> Coming my way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a freight train coming. 